Hello friends, this is Nilesh Chavkar. In this tutorial, we'll see the architecture of 8086. Architecture consists of the whole structure of the anything. Here we'll see the structure of 8086. The main 8086 is divided into two parts. The first one is a BIU and the second one is a EU. The BIU means a bus interface unit and the EU means a execution unit. First we'll see the BIU in detail. So BIU is bus interface unit <laughs> that is full form but it performs very necessary operations like interface with other devices it provides interface to other devices it does all the working related to the memory that is fetching data from memory storing data into the memory all external works are done by this BIU the first compound that we're gonna see is this segment registers if you remember then memory segmentation diagram was something like this these are the segments and this was a starting address also called as a base address and this address was hold by base registers or segment registers and something like this displacement to hold these displacements we are having offset address so now that time we studied that to hold the base address of code segment we have cs register to hold the starting address or a base address of extra segment we have es so all that cs es ds and es comes under the piu here they all are 16 bit registers ES for extra segment, CS for code, SS for stack segment and DS for data segment. The next thing which we have is this address generation circuit. What this circuit does is calculating a physical address. It's the main work of this address generation circuit. There was a formula that physical address equals to segment address plus offset address it was a formula we studied it in the tutorial i don't know number but it was in a memory segmentation so this was about the 20 bit 8086 has 1 mb of memory and to access this memory 20 bit address space is given but developers wanted to keep it as a 16-bit addressing scheme now this was a big deal for accessing a 1 MB of locations in memory using a 16-bit addressing scheme they developed the formula let us take an example and demonstrate it say that this is a memory uh, 1 MB of memory and has a 2 raised to 20 location inside it just roughly I'm drawing and I want to access <coughs> I want to access any random location like this since this is of 1 MB I need a addressing scheme of 20 bits we studied this using a 20 bit addressing scheme helps us to give the unique name or unique address to every location into the memory the main working of this formula is the segment address is left shifted by four positions now four position in binary equals to 10 edge you can have a calculation over it here mupi used to give a 16 bit address 16 bit segment address and this address generation circuit converts this address to 20 bit physical address how it works we'll see in this formula 16 bit segment address means 4 
टाइम्स जीरो थ्री वन टू थ्री फोर टू थ्री फोर वन टू थ्री फोर सो दिस इज अक्सटीन बिट एड्रेस जस्ट आई हेड राउंड इट एंड आई वॉन्ट टू मेक इट ट्वेंटी बीट दिस इज वन टू थ्री फोर this makes it 16 bit if i want to make it 20 bit i need to add one more pair of four zeros that is four bits so now this has become five and after addition it will be 16 plus 4 that will give me a 20 bit so what i need to do is i need to left shift this segment address by 4 bits now 4 bits in binary equals to 10 in hexadecimal so this is what we doing we are multiplying segment address by 10h and we are just adding offset address to get our exact physical location that is physical address Let's take an example. Say that my segment address is equals to one, two, three, four H, and my offset address equals to zero, 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 five H. My segment address is of sixteen bit. I need to left shift it by four positions. For that, first I will convert it to binary. So one in x will be zero 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 one in binary. Zero zero one zero will be two. Three will be zero zero one one, and the four will be zero one zero zero. So this is binary pattern of the sixteen bit segment address. Now I need to left shift it by four positions. For that, I will add four extra zeros to RHS of the digit. So this is all a final 20-bit segment address. Now again convert it to the hexadecimal system. So it will be one, two, three, four, zero, H. Now this has become a 20-bit address. Now we need to just Add offset address to it. Adding a offset address will make it as a zero 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 five. So final answer will be one two three four five in hexadecimal twenty bit physical address. So this is how the address generation circuit works it takes the 16 bit segment address and offset address and converts it to the 20 bit physical address so this is the main working of the address generation circuit and don't forget this formula now you know how to deal with this formula how to convert any given address to the offset address let us have a small test say that Three, four, eight, one, two. This is my physical address, and three thousand is my segment address. I want to calculate a uh, offset address from this data. First, I will write it over here. One, two, three. That is the segment address. Now, whatever remaining will be my offset address. So that is four, eight, one, two is my offset address. there are multiple combinations possible of segment address and offset address so next combination can be 3 4 8 1 and 0 0 0 2 will be the offset address next will be mm, 3 4 8 0 can be a segment address and Zero zero one two can be offset address. So 
likewise we can divide the segment address and the offset address from a given physical address in this formula we need any two addresses to find third unknown address so this was about the second thing that was address generation circuit and now next is IP IP is the instruction pointer that always points to the next location we studied it in a I guess memory segmentation yeah IP always consists offset address of next instruction this was the highlighting point of the IP IP is a offset address container of CS segment so if we want to find out the offset address of next instruction then according to the formula which we studied just now it will be a segment address into 10h plus offset address was the formula for physical address so according to this formula here segment address is cs into 10h plus offset address container that is ip will give us the address of next instruction next point is a 6 byte prefetch queue this part this is the next highlighting point of the PIU say that this is a mu p and this one is a memory in non pipelined processors like mu p8085 the process execution used to take place like this mu p is, uh, say that mu p is executing the first instruction after finishing the execution of first instruction mu p used to go into the memory i'm giving names 3 4 5 6 7 8 mu p used to go into the memory it used to select the second instruction then data bus used to fetch it again to the memory and then execution of the second instruction used to take place after finishing the execution of second instruction mu p used to go into memory then you do then data bus used to fetch third instruction and then execution of the third instruction used to take place now currently execution of third instruction is taking place but my address bus and the data bus both are ideal this was a normal procedure used to take place in a non pipeline processors like 8085 oh, we'll see it over here this one is a time slice say that my first instruction is fetched after fetching the instruction the execution used to take place after finishing the execution of this instruction again fetching of second instruction after finishing the fetching execution of the second instruction then third one fetching of the third instruction after fetching execution of the third then fetching of fourth instruction and then execution of the fourth instruction the process used to go like this and it was time consuming procedure but in 8086 it has a new way in 8086 first instruction is used to fetch then while execution of first instruction is going on mu p used to go and select the second instruction and data bus used to bring it to the mu p so while finishing the execution of the first instruction my second instruction is in mu p's hand as it completes the execution of the first instruction the second used to go here and the execution used to start same way while executing the second instruction mu p used to go into the memory it used to select the third instruction data bus used to bring it to the mu p 
and before finishing the execution of this second instruction my third instruction is ready over here after finishing execution the third instruction used to go in the queue and this way the execution used to take place we'll see it on a timing diagram first instruction is fetched now execution of the first instruction is going on at the same time that is executing the first instruction mupi has fetched the second instruction now as it completes the execution of the first it has a second in hand and execution of the second instruction will be taken while executing the second instruction mup used to fetch third instruction as it finish the execution of the second one it start with the third one as it is executing the third instruction it used to fetch the fourth that is next one and as it finish the execution of the third one it start the execution of the fourth instruction so in the same diagram this much is the time required to execute the four instructions by the non pipeline processors like 8085 and this much is the time required by the pipeline processors like 8086 so this was about the pipelining but this pipelining procedure increases the efficiency and the speed of the mupi but to increase it further we have one more concept that is instruction queue we have a 6 byte fifo ram available with us where we can fetch instruction in advance and store them in this ram say that currently we are executing the first instruction as per the pipelining procedure we must fetch this second instruction and after finishing the execution of the first one immediately we can have a start with second instruction but this fifo ram gives us facility of fetching next six instruction in one time means while executing this first instruction mup will fetch the next six byte instructions this means that we can fetch six bytes of instruction in advance say that currently i'm executing the second instruction and in queue i have 3 4 5 6 and 7 this much of instructions available over here means as i finish the execution of the second one the third instruction will be available for me then fourth then fifth the same way just instead of fetching one instruction we are fetching six bytes of instruction at a time so what differ it makes here say that our control section is located control section will fetch one one instruction from this queue say that the first instruction is first control section will decode it and will give the commands according to the instruction then all this instruction will come down by one one position that is here it will be 2 here it will be 3 4 5 and 6 and this last location will be empty since one location is of one byte that is 8 bits mup will not bother if there is only one location empty since mup has a 16 bit data bus means it can tra it can fetch 16 bits of instruction in one cycle so it will wait for the another location to get empty currently this one location is empty and as it sees a second location to get empty it will fetch next two instructions two instructions will make it 16 bit in this way queue refilling takes place pipelining fails when there is a branch in our program branch means a function call say that 
this is a set of instructions here my main function is located and I have certain code over here and from on this line I made a call to the function car and the car function is located somewhere here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 this is the instruction view 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 here we have a control section which fetches and decodes the instructions as the execution starts this mup will fetch all the six instruction and fill the instruction queue so the starting instructions will be at the start of the execution 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 as control section fetches this first instruction and decodes it the whole queue will come down by one one position so it will be 2 3 4 5 and 6 this last position will be emptied as we discussed earlier it will fetch next two instruction whenever two location get empty so after fetching first instruction this will be the status of the queue after decoding the second instruction the queue the queue status will be now it will become 3 4 5 and 6 now these two locations are empty here as mucus is two locations are empty that is 16 bits are empty in our instruction queue it will fetch next two instructions next two instructions means this 7 and 8 are next two instructions so they will go in the instruction queue so now numbering will be 7 and 8 now after fetching this third instruction the queue will come down by one more location so it will be 4 5 this one is 6 this one is 7 and this one is 8 now this last position is empty now the time for the executing of this fourth instruction and the fourth instruction is a function call so say that it executed the fourth instruction and mup sees the function call in this instruction say that this fourth instruction is executed and the status of the queue will become 5 6 7 8 now these two locations are again empty over here so mup will again go mup will again go to the code section and it will fetch this next two instruction that is 9 and say that 10 we have not written it but assume it so this is a whole 8 byte queue but after executing this fourth instruction mup comes to know that there is a function call function call to the car function which is located at this location that is 8 instruction so execution can't continue now the next instruction which should get executed is 8th one but we have 5th instruction at the next so at this stage mup will discard this whole queue and it will refill the queue from the 8th instruction so in our queue we'll have 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 likewise finally BIO does this operation it provides interface to other devices 
it operates with both cycles and this all are theory answers you can write them on your own so these are main highlighted functions of BIU and next tutorial we'll see the execution unit for now thank you guys for the watching please subscribe us and see you in the next tutorial